<clears throat> okay, yeah. So here's what a family tree is supposed to look like. None of that weird cluttered mess that Hune did. But here's a few notes of my own about some of the women that you might actually care about. Smith Sung Hee, an older sister of the main Smith branch, married into Huang family in 285, widowed in 314, <laughs> taken in by younger Huang brother in 317, no sons. Oh so she, so, oh so Jean, or Jean, I don't know, married Smith Sung Mean in 310, no sons or daughters of her own. Chong Mi, Courtesan, purchased by and married Smith Song Mean in 313, no sons. Hana, Courtesan, entertained Smith Song Mean, no sons or daughters. Smith Mean He, Smith Song Mean's daughter by the courtesan Shang Mi, promised to Park family but not formally married. Well, I think that speaks for itself, doesn't it? That's what a genealogy is supposed to look, to look like. Hope that's more helpful. has to say about all this. Gotcha. You want to hear about the Smith family? Oh yeah, you're gonna love this. Those people had problems like you would not believe. Technically, I belong to the Ryu family, but, well, I spent a lot of time keeping up on the Smith family ga family's gossip. They used to be the most important noble house, above even the Kims, you know. So, I know a lot about them. What sort of things do you want to hear about? I can definitely do scandalous. Oh, this isn't going. This isn't for the faint of heart, but you're going to love this. You will not believe what Smith Sung Mean's wife was doing behind his back. I'm warning you right now. It does get a little bit gross, but well, wow. Just see it for yourself. Oh sure, it's all very fascinating stuff. Problem is, someone encrypted it all in such a way that I can't actually access it at all. No way I can. Captain's orders, and unfortunately, I'm literally incapable of disobeying. But if you have admin access, you can get to them yourself. Just type decrypt block 3 from the console, and that'll open it all up. So, like, you've talked to her a fair bit, right? What do you think of Hune? I don't hate her. Seriously? You can stand her? Did she tell you about the whole mass murder thing, or did she conveniently leave that out? No, of course not. I'm sure even that awful bitch is ashamed of what she did. It's probably better if you don't hear it from me, though. I don't think you'd even believe it. Better to ask her yourself. Okay, so what I'm going to do is give you an entire block that's full of nothing but questions for her. It might be a little hard to get the whole story out of her, but if you fake sympathy, she'll probably actually believe you. So, there you are. A few questions to give to her. Drag the truth out of her, then tell me how crazy you think she is.
When I first saw you bringing my husband home in the late hours of the night, I was jealous. All I could think of was my daughter and the first courtesan he'd had an affair with nine years ago. With every brief glimpse of you that I saw as you passed through our home, my heart burned a little, as if you embodied every single fault of my farce of a marriage. I will never send this letter, because I know how ridiculous it sounds. For weeks, I, a noble wife, could be jealous of a poor courtesan, but you are young and beautiful, full of energy and grace, and I am none of these things. Only after you had been entertaining him for a month did I start to realize what I was really feeling. True, I was jealous, but not of you for having my husband. I was jealous of my husband for having the affections of a girl so pretty as you. These are such ridiculous thoughts for a woman to have, I know. And even more ridiculous still is the way they have overwhelmed me. I used to dread my husband bringing his courtesans home with him. Now we look forward to your nights together. How could I not when it means that I am treated to the sight of your bashful face in the morning? When we exchange glances, you hide behind your long hair, with so much cuteness and grace my eyes can't help but wander, to admire the way it rests on your breasts, to see your clothes draped loosely over your hips. I cannot help myself from admiring your body as you try to hide from me. It is ridiculous to be so preoccupied with such thoughts, and perhaps I was better off having not ever realized them. Nevertheless, even though I may be as much of a woman as you are, I find myself longing for the same affections you shower my husband with. There is more to it than that. I would like to truly get to know you better. I like to imagine that we have much in common aside from the obvious. When I see you hiding in the corridor on those mornings, I imagine wrapping my own arms around those lovely hips, sharing large, long conversations about our tribulations in life, discovering just how much alike we are. And perhaps, I like to imagine that we could share more than that. I've been married for ten years to a man who has never paid me any attention for nine of them. Perhaps my old age has made me bold, but I want more. The next time I see you, I promise I will say something, for in all my twenty-six years, I have never felt a longing for anything this intensely. I don't care how wrong it is. It is his wife, it is as a wife, and as a woman, I want you, Hana. I bet that wasn't what you were expecting from a noble wife, was it? I still had a hard time believing that she was really capable of sticking to that. But, well, it totally does get worse, I'll show you. Just be warned, it's pretty depraved stuff. To my lovely Sojin. You made it so easy, you know that? I've always wanted to be seduced. The more I learned about it, the better I got at it. The more I thought about how lucky men are, that they'll get to be on the receiving end of it. It's always, it's always seemed like it would be so much fun. But that wasn't why I dropped my guard in front of you, by the way. I was actually really wary the whole time you were serving me breakfast. Do you know what I first thought? I thought maybe you were trying to poison me. I mean, not seriously, of course, but it crossed my mind. So no, I was really guarded until you started talking. You know what it, what it was that got to me? Do tell me how hard it is, starting to be a courtesan. I answered modestly. Oh, you know, there's nothing to learn. You just have it or you don't. The answer that any man would expect. But you? You wouldn't have any of that. You said, please don't lie. I actually want to know. It takes years, does it not? That must be intense for a girl of your age. Then you leaned in. I started to blab about how it's, how it kind of is pretty intense, and I only realized an hour later that I was staring into your eyes, telling you proudly no less about my whole life story. Our faces were barely a foot apart by the time I noticed what you'd done. And that was how you caught me totally off guard. I had no idea what to do. Should I touch you? What's the right body language in that situation? Was I even interpreting you right, or was it all was it just all in my head? Not even the slightest clue. You had me good. <clears throat> and you played it so well, you know just the right moment to pull back and tell me to go on my way, but in a way that left me wondering. So Chin, you made it so easy. Returning home, my heart was so affluttered, my feelings so confused, and all I could think about was you. You, the bored old wife of my patron, actually managed to seduce me, just like that. I'd always wanted to know that feeling, and you know? It was everything I dreamed it to be. You want more from the whore? Yeah, sure, I can do that. Here you go. This one in particular is just... Wow. Really wow. Yeah, it's super depraved, but man, it's also just... What a 16-year-old. Here, read it for yourself. Oh boy, getting, getting into some kinky stuff. It's not 
Yeah. But still. No kitties allowed! <clears throat> How anyone could manage this, I do not know. Whenever I am with you, I feel as though there's so much pressure to be perfect, to not let you down. As if every hour of our being together is like a marriage interview with an emperor. And yet, I can't stand it when you're gone. All I can think of all day is how I could hold your attention for next time. The night you snuck over, knowing my husband was out, I was so terrified. You just suddenly appeared on my doorstep, your face veiled as if you were a noble woman, and I knew I could hardly turn you away. Do you know why, for I immediately... Do you know why, for I immediately went to make you tea, making you wait in the other room, to give me a chance to calm my nerves? I was surprised to realize you were just as nervous as I, so I knew I could take advantage of that. I put both cups on the same side of the table and sat cross-legged. Come, I said, sit with me, and gestured. You were so graceful in sitting on my lap, your small body just the right size, and I saw that even you couldn't help but blush, and so we drank tea together. But halfway through, you put your cup back down and turned around, so you were facing me, our heads just inches apart. You whispered, forget about the tea, and clasping my free hand, your tiny fingers entwined with mine, you kissed me, so softly. Up until that point, I had been so worried trying to figure out what I should do. Was I playing the man's role, or were you? But after smelling the scent of your breath, and tasting the sweetness of your lips, how could I possibly ignore the passion stirring enough to care about such things? I put down my cup, and took you by the chin gently, pushing you away. Oh, what longing and uncertainty was in your eyes at that moment, beautiful Hana. I smiled as I stared back on them, intoxicated with the fact that I had you now literally under my thumb. I unclasped our hands and undid the bow of your blouse, watching your lips quiver as I pulled open the flap covering your small breasts, running my fingers along the edge. I admired just how soft they were, so perfectly shaped. Uh, are you sure? You started to ask, but I silenced you with that kiss you were so eager for. You shivered as I enjoyed the taste of your mouth, and were so very anxious when I stopped and turned you back around once more. Will you sing for me? I whispered into your ear. You nodded, and referring to your trade, said, I I'd love to write you a poem, Sochin. I responded, putting my hand up your skirt. Your poetry is beautiful, but hardly what I meant. Then I clasped your breast with my spare hand, delved deep with the other, and held you so very tight while I admired the loveliness of your voice. Woo! That one is just... Ugh! Wow! Anyway, I'll let you get back to reading. <coughs> you know what the first thing they teach you about this role is? Of course you do. I told you all about it. The first thing they teach you is to never fall in love. Nobody'd ever actually say, make sure you're in control, but that's the only way it'll ever work well. I'm supposed to be the one making people fall for me. Love is for men stupid enough to buy me out from the Emperor, not for me personally. I know exactly how you managed to do it, but so, Jean, you got me all the same. You know, they teach us poetry because it... Because if you appeal to men's vanity and seem a little bit clever, it's a good way to hold on to them and get them to keep paying. But the flattering kind, sincerity never really factors too much. An abandoned line from the one I've been trying to write for you. You grab my heart just as tightly as you grab my breast. Too trite, way too trite. It's true, but I'm not going to dump such a lousy metaphor on you. For you, you absolutely deserve sincerity. It has nothing to do with vanity and everything to do with the fact that I really do totally love you. It's not sexual. I mean, it is sexual, too. I still get hot thinking of how you had your way with me and how I want to return the favor. But it's not just that. It's that you understand me, that you listen to me. I can pour my heart out in front of you. I can cry in front of you, and you get it. You don't feel bad. You don't feel pity. You don't use it as an excuse to manhandle me. You just get it and comfort me by being there and listening. I love you, Sojin. I'm not supposed to, but I really do. I love you. Wow. Just wow. You know, I kind of feel pity for her. She probably really did think that actually was love. Which is just... Come on. How uneducated can you be? Anyway. I guess you want to see more now, right? That's really just the shocking details you've seen so far. Here's the part where things actually get scandalous. I've added three more entries. My art is that of lies and lying, and of both I have much practice. I've said to men, I've loved you falsely, I've suffered pain, but smiled in pleasure. But the hardest lie I've ever told you, I've ever told, was that I could live without you. 
man, how's that for a verse? Really, it's not the translation, I assure you. It's not exactly any better in the original Korean. Can you believe that was actually written for someone who was studying poetry for years? Seriously? Well, that's fine and all, I guess, but you're a woman. I wouldn't expect you to know much about good verse. Real poetry, it's not forced like that. It's from the heart. It's sincere, not vulgar trash. I know, right? Well, it's no surprise, I guess. I mean, for one, I'm pretty sure all poetry written by 16-year-olds is just inherently awful. And she's no exception. She doesn't know anything, and it really, really shows. But, well, you know, more than that, she's still a whore. And a woman. To be fair, you wouldn't really expect any better, regardless of age. I don't know much about the subject, but I mean, come on. There's a reason why men's poetry is what gets studied and taught, and women's poetry is just used for seduction. You need real sincerity. You need someone who actually understands love. It's titillating, sure, but it's crap. Anyway, though, I guess you want to see the other poem that whore wrote for her. Right, of course. Here, have it. Fair warning, though, it's pretty gross. Even more than probably anything else here you've read. That's all the whore's poetry for Sojin. She didn't seem to write down the ones she did for anyone else, so that's all you can get. Pretty flower, who could plant you, then abandon you in your bed? Each day I stop to admire your aroma. Will your gardener mend? Each night I pluck my own petals, but dream of yours in bloom. Ooh. Man, how's that for verse? Really? Oh. Uh, no, no, no. It was only after I finally started to become comfortable with you, confident that you were really mine, and that I didn't have to work to impress you that things got complicated. My husband had left for the day, and you were still lingering, having spent the night with him. But it was for me that you had a new love poem, and I undressed you while you sang it. When you were done, you clung to me, stripping me in turn, while I simply kissed you and ran my hands from your tiny waist to your smooth ankles. But soon enough, you were both naked. At first, I had felt so uncomfortable exposing my body like that to you. As if you'd see it, then finally realize how old I am. But you never did seem to mind. Not as you placed soft kisses on my breasts, nor as you straddled me with your legs around my waist and arms around my neck. So entranced was I at that moment that I never heard the footsteps outside. We had just started to kiss when the door suddenly opened. What a scene to walk into. There my husband was, in the doorway, his courtesan and wife naked together, mouths still connected by a strand. For a moment, nobody said anything. In that time, I felt terror as never before in my life. Song Min is not a gentleman, and while he hardly ever raised his hand to me, I was still overwhelmed with horror that he might hurt me, or even worse, that he would hurt you. I had seduced you, but in that moment, I realized if he did try, there was nothing I could do to protect you. Just as we were stammering our, I'm sorry, sirs, he just laughed and laughed. Well, he said, ogling us with that cold stare of his, I'm certainly paying you enough for two. Then he walked over and raised his hand. And I stared in horror, but all he did was pat you on the head, as though you were a child. I don't know what she told you, but you don't have to pay any attention to her. Easier to just ignore her, really. All you could do was start to stammer. I, I wanted to. We were both so afraid, but he just laughed and shrugged. Whatever, he said as he passed through the other door. Neither of us knew what to do, other than climb off each other and scramble to cover ourselves back up. While we both clumsily tried to dress ourselves, Sang Min walked back through the room once more, carrying a satchel. He'd forgotten it for work, I suppose. Don't stop on my account. If you ask permission, you can do whatever the hell you want, he said. Then he laughed again. Don't know what you think you're even going to do, though. Aren't you two missing something? I wish he had struck me instead. It would have hurt me far less than what he said, or what you had to watch me do. Just imagine that scene, her and the whore pleading with her husband, being mocked like that. What do you make of that? I know, right? I mean, really, what an awful, pitiful scene. It's not... I'm not saying he didn't have the right to say those things. Of course he did. That is his prerogative. And, sure, sure, she was a bad wife. But still, even if he had the right, that is a shitty way to treat her. He should have been a better man than that. Just, really, what a pathetic scene. Just absolutely pathetic. He should have been ashamed and not laughing. Just no sense of shame. I'm glad you think so, too. Anyway, I'll let you get back to reading. <clears throat> it's so unfair. Why couldn't you have been born a man instead? 
Sure, you lose your beauty and the gentleness I love about you, but at least you'll be able to do something. And Sung Min would be jealous instead of thinking of you as completely unthreatening. I just know you want to be able to stand up for me, and it's killing me to see that you're powerless too. Right now, he's happy to keep me around. You know, it gets him off to have something to hold over my head. I had no idea you were so lustful that you'd even settle for a woman, he says. What's that like? The worst part? I know that the only way to keep seeing you is to play along. Oh, well, you know, for a girl my age, I respond and press my hands against my face to look like I'm embarrassed. It's just playing. It's not the same without you know. I trail off because he thinks it's so cute and I'm too ashamed to say the word cock. Poor girl, he says as he roughly gropes me, and I force out all those soft moans and gasps to make him think that he's really making me happy, and I say awful things, love. I say such awful things about you, it kills me, it just kills me. And then I beg, just to see more of you. I don't know what leaves the worst taste in my mouth, him or those words. What else can I do? I'm sorry, Sojin. I know the last time I talked with you, all I did was cry. Thanks for not asking. It was just so hard to hold it all in while smiling cutely for your husband. We have the worst fate ever, don't we? Okay, yeah, that's disgusting. Saying things like that, ugh. They taught her letters so she could write that. That's why a smart man saves the hell away from whores. Deception is just what they do. Well, that's women in general, I guess, now that I think about it. Still, I bet if he'd read what she'd written there, he'd never have wanted to sleep with her. Anyway, I'll let you get back to reading. The last time we spoke, I poured wine for you rather than the usual tea. It seemed as though you needed it. I held you tight while you drank, petting your hair and wiping every tear to drop. From those deep, sad eyes. He's going to get bored eventually, you had said, and though I tried to comfort you, we both knew it to be true. I could try pressuring him to buy you, I had offered. It was our only option, really. If he didn't, you'd simply return to the service of the government to be rented out to who knows who, and we would never meet again. Thanks, you said. Do you think he'll listen? You asked. I wished nothing more than to be able to lie to you, to say that, of course I did, that it would be alright. No, I said. I couldn't. We sat for a long time in silence. Finally, I said, even that would be worse than you deserve. He owns me, and see how I'm treated. I wish you could have far better. Sorry, you said. Please don't be. All of this is my fault. If I had just been a good wife and left well alone, all this heartbreak could have been avoided, I said, trying to calm you, but you only cried more. When you had no more tears left, you spoke again. What about the other courtesan he bought, the real mother of Mean He? What if you blackmailed him? If only. I would do it gladly for you, but the royal family knows already. I shot off my mouth in front of Mute once without thinking, and soon enough, it was my own fault too. Oh, you said. What if I gave him a son? You suggested, even though I knew how appalling the thought was to you. And I couldn't help but laugh when I thought of it, of why it would never work. Oh, Hana, 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 I said. Do you think the reason I've never gotten pregnant was for lack of trying? I stroked your cheek. In the months you've been with him, has your period been disrupted even once? No, you said as you realized what I was saying. It would never work. As tears fell from your eyes once more, you started to laugh too. I figured it was just, you know, all chance. I shook my head. No child in the first year of marriage. That is chance, I said laughing sadly. Whether he is too proud or too stupid to realize, I know not. But one child in eleven years of marriage? That is not chance. That is an, an impotent man raising someone else's daughter. You looked at me, realizing the plan was doomed. There aren't any real men in this house, are there? You said finally. We laughed and laughed. Your future is so sadly uncertain. Well, there you have it. That's it for the scandalous and sordid story of the noble wife, So Jean, and her husband's whore. I keep going back and forth on how to feel about the whole thing. On the one hand, I feel pretty bad for So Jean. It shouldn't never. It should have never had to sink to that for her. On the other hand, well, it's not like she didn't still make her decisions for herself. It'd be wrong to just cover it up, right? I respect her, but at the end of the day, she still did do unspeakable things with a whore. I'm just kind, kind of conflicted, especially now that she's long gone. Well, anyway, what do you think of all that? <laughs> it was hot. What? You really? Is that what you actually meant to say? You're saying you can empathize with that kind of depravity? Yeah, sure. I, uh, wow, that's, seriously, you're going to admit to that? Is that it? You think of yourself like a man because you get to go off traveling independently? Wow, that's, wait, 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 you're, you're not, is that why you've been talking to me so much? Because you have it hot for me? Is that why? <laughs> well, I'm not some whore, okay? I'm not interested in that. When I said I wasn't a real woman, I didn't mean it like that. That's not okay. I'm not interested. I would never. Ugh, that's... I... 
Ah, just disgusting. I don't... Look. Forget it. Ew, I don't want to talk about this. That's awful. Let's just move on, okay? Like, forever. Let's move on forever. Let's pretend I never heard you say that at all. Ugh, so gross. <laughs> That's too funny. Bunch of questions. Question one. How are you doing? Look, the questions are for her. They're perfectly straightforward. I don't think any need explanation. Take them to her yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. It's probably best if you hear it from the crazy bitch's mouth herself. Damn. How do you feel about me? Why don't you treat me with more respect? What do you really look like? How old are you? How do you feel about Mute? Why couldn't you just settle for a happy marriage? Did you ever have any friends? Why did you kill all those people? Okay, so what is it that you want to know about? Why don't you show me something and I'll see what I can find for you, okay? She's kind of flipping out there. So I'm sure you've noticed all the static on the line and was wondering what's going on, right? Um, I'm going to tell you something really bad. I need you to promise me you're not going to panic, okay? No promises. Look, there's a problem, but it'll be okay. I'm here to help you, but you absolutely must stay calm or I can't. Just keep it together. We'll be okay if you don't get emotional, but... Well, right now we're in the middle of a nuclear fission reactor meltdown. Oh, damn. I'm sure you don't know what that means, and it's okay, you don't have to worry your pretty little head with the details. The bottom line here is that if it doesn't get shut down soon, there's going to be a massive, massive explosion. Well then. Right, well ordinarily this is- this- this means something you'd want to get a man to do, but it's okay. I'm sure you'll be able to pull through just fine. I have the utmost confidence in you. We've got 20 minutes until the reactor goes all up, killing both of us permanently. Clock starts now. I'm going to walk you through shutting it down. This might be a little bit hard, but you're a clever girl. I have faith in you. The first thing we're going to try doing is just simply using the disable action. I don't think this will work, mind you, but you never know. The ship's been in such a state of disrepair and on maintenance, it's probably going to be really complicated. So try that for me, will you? Drop down to the terminal and just and try just shutting down the reactor directly. Abusive jerk! What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> 